Good morning, this is Aman Jain, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Department of Civil Engineering, Sir Padampat Singhani University, Udaipur. And this is my third video lecture on Environmental Engineering Second. Today we will uh, study about the following topics. Uh, the first topic is coagulation, um, plane sedimentation, which is, which is, associ which is associated with um, coagulation. So let's see what are the co uh, what are the different uh, uh, what is meant by flocculation. So flocculation is a stimulation uh, by mechanical means uh, to agglomerate uh, agglomerate destabilized particles into compact, fast, settleable particles known as flocks. So the flocks are uh, gelatinous PPTs uh, which are um, destabilized. Uh, by the flocculants, uh, which are chemical agents, and uh, they are settled. And they get settled in the bottom of sedimentation tank, which make the sedimentation more uh, more faster, more efficient. Um, flocculation or gentle agitation results from velocity uh, differences or gradients in coagulated, coagulated water, which causes uh, the fine moving stabilized particles to come into contact and become large readily settleable, settleable flocks. Um, it is common practice to provide an initial rapid or flash mix um, in which the uh, coagulants are mixed with the water uh, rapidly for the dispersal of coagulant or other chemicals uh, in the water and uh, after this uh, rapid or flash mixing, the slow mixing, mixing is done um, slow mixing is then done during which the growth of flocks take place. So the basically the uh, growth of flock takes place in the uh, slow mi mixing. Uh, let's have a look at the what is uh, difference between rapid or flash flash mixing and slow mixing. Uh, rapid mixing is the process by which coagulant is rapidly and uniformly dispersed through the mass of the water. This process uh, usually occurs in a small basin immediately uh, after uh, the immediately uh, preceding or the head of the coagulation basin. It means that when the water enters into the sedimentation uh, with the coagulation basin, it, it is mixed at that point only at the entrance of the sedimentation tank or which is coagulation, coagulation basin also. Generally, the detention period uh, is 30 to 60 seconds, and uh, uh, the head loss is 20 to 60 centimeters of water. And here, collides destabilized, and nucleus for the flock is formed. Nucleus for the flock is formed in this uh, rapid or flash mixing process, and then the full uh, uh, full flocks are formed in the later process, which is known as slow mixing. Uh, generally, the detention period is 30 to 60 seconds, which I uh, uh, discussed before also. Uh, that uh, 30 to 60 seconds, uh, the water is uh, mi mixed with the uh, after mixing with the uh, for this uh, coagulant, the water is detained for a maximum one minute, uh, half half to one minute, and the head loss of the water here is 20 to 60 centimeters. Then the slow mixing brings the, the contact between the finely divided destabilized matter formed during rapid mixing. So after this, the water gets clarified, uh, more, uh, more clarified and then we proceed for the next process which uh, is known as uh, filtration. Let's have a look at that process also. So this is filtration, the resulting water after sedimentation will not be pure and may contain some very fine suspended particles and bacteria into it. So to clean that, uh, those impurities from water, we go for a process known as filtration. Uh, to remove or to reduce uh, you know, remaining impurities still further, the water is filtered uh, through the bags of the fine, uh, fine granular material such as sand, etc. The process of passing the water through the bags of such granular materials is known as filtration. So let's have a look at the process, how 
filtration works. So this is the filtration mechanism. Uh, uh, there are four type of uh, mechanism. Uh, the first is sedimentation. The second one is the um, intercep interception. Third one is Brownian diffusion, and fourth one is inertia. Let's have a look, detailed look over into it. Uh, sedimentation, the mechanism of sedimentation is due to the force of gravity and the associate settling velocity of the particle which causes it to, it to cross the steam lines and reach the collector. This is the sedimentation uh, which occurs in the, uh, which is the first stage of the filtration in the filtration chambers. Uh, the second one is interception. Interception of particles is common for large particles. If a large enough particle follows the stream lines that lies very close to the media surface, it will then hit the media grain and be captured. So, interception of the particle which uh, is sedimenting and to the media in the into the space uh, where the space between the two media grains or many media grains. Uh, and it get captured there. Then what happens the next is the Brownian diffusion. Diffusion towards the media grains uh, occurs for small particles such as viruses. Uh, this happens for the viruses or the bacteria. Particles move randomly about within the fluid due to the thermal gradients. This mechanism is only important for the particles with diameter less than one micron. Inertia. Attachment by inertia occurs when the larger particles move fast enough to travel off their stream lines and bump into the media grains. So this is the Brownian diffusion. Let's have a look at the various filter materials. What are the material, filter materials? And the first one is the sand. Sand either fine or coarse. Um, sand either fine or coarse uh, is generally used as the filter media. The size of sand is measured and expressed by the term called effective size. Uh, what is, let's have a look at the thing, uh, that what this effective size means. The defective size that is D10. D10 can be defined as the size of the sieve uh, in mm through which the 10% of the sample of sand by weight will pass. The uniformity in size or degree of variation in size of the particle measured and expressed by the term called uniformity coefficient. The uniformity coefficient is d60 by d10. Uh, the uniformity coefficient that is d60 by d10 may be defined as the ratio of the sea size in mm through which 60% of the sample of the sand will pass uh, to the effective size of sand. <coughs> Another filter material is uh, uh, another filter materials are gravel. Uh, the layers of sand may be uh, may be supported on uh, gravel, which permits. Sorry for the interruption. Let's continue. Uh, the layers. So we were talking about the gravel. Uh, the layers of the sand may be supported on gravel, which permits the filter water to move freely into the drains. Uh, and allow the wash water to move uniformly upwards. Uh, filter materials, um, instead of using sand, sometimes anthrafilt is used as a filter media. Anthrafilt is made up, made up of anthracite, uh, which is a type of cold stone and burns without smoke or flames. Uh, it is cheaper and has been it is cheaper and has been able to give high rate of filtration. There are two types of filters, slow sand filter and rapid sand filter. Uh, slow sand filter consists of fine sand supported by gravel. Uh, they capture particles near the surface of the bed and are usually cleaned by scraping away the top layer of the sand that contains um, the particles. Uh, rapid sand filter, filter consists of a larger sand grain supported by gravel. Uh, is supported by gravel and captures particles throughout the bag. They are cleaned by backwashing of the water and water through the bag to lift out the particles. The particles which are interrupted in the uh, soil grains are then backwashed and 
clean out, uh, cleaned by this process. There are some multimedia filters also, they consist of two or more layers of different granular materials with different densities. Usually, anthracite, coal, sand, and gravel are used. The different layers combined may, combined may provide more versatile collection, um, more versatile collection than a single sand layer. Um, layer stain here separated even after backwashing. So let's have a look at the cross-sectional view of a rapid sand filter. Uh, so this is a um, cast, uh, this is cast iron manifold um, with strainers. These are the perforated, uh, perforated in laterals. This is filter floor. This is a gravel layer. This is then sand, and this is a wash water troughs. troughs. So this is a perfectly perfect cross section of the uh, uh, rapid sand filter. Now let's have, let's compare both of uh, uh, filters, which um, which are rapid sand filter and slow sand filter. Let's have a look at it. So we can compare the slow sand and uh, rapid sand filters on some points like uh, base material, filter sand, rate of filtration, loss of head, method of cleaning, pre-treatment and post-treatment, flexibility. So we will compare all of this thing and uh, uh, both of uh, both filters on the, this point. So I will look at the base material. Uh, in slow sand filters, SSF means slow sand filter. It varies from uh, 3 to 65 mm in size and 30 to 75 centimeter in depth while in rapid sand filter RSF it varies from 3 to 40 mm in size and depth is slightly more that is about 60 to 90 uh, centimeter so size is less and depth is more in rapid sand filter filter sand in SSF the effective size range is between 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 mm and uniformity coefficient Ranges between 1.8 to 2.5 or 3.0 in RSF the effective size range is between 0 0.35 to 0.55 and normal stick coefficient between 1.2 to 1.8. Rate of filtration that is uh, in SSF it is small such as 100 to 200 the liter per, per hectare square meter and uh, of filter area while in RSF it is large such as 3000 to 6000 liter per hectare. Per, per, per hour square meter of the area. Um, flexibility, the SSF are not flexible uh, for meeting variation in the demand, whereas um, RSF are quite flexible for meeting the reasonable variation in demands. Post treatment, about uh, almost pure water is obtained from slow, slow cell filters. Water may be disinfected slightly to make it completely safe. Disinfection is must in rapid sand filters. Method of cleaning, scraping and removing of the top uh, 1.5 to 3 uh, cm thick layer is done uh, to clean SSF. To clean RSF, sand is agitated and backwashed with or without compressed air. Uh, loss of air in case of uh, slow sand filters of approximately 10 cm or is the initial loss and 0.8 to 1.2 meter is the final limit. Uh, when cleaning is required for RSF, 0.3 is the initial loss and uh, 2.5 to 3.5 is the final limit when cleaning is required. So, after filtration, uh, we just as uh, as uh, we have studied and compared both of uh, both of both type of filters uh, and. Um, as far as the post treatment is concerned, we have discussed that, uh, and after in slow sand filters, disinfection is not required uh, because almost pure water is obtained from it. But, however, we are doing um, slightly um, uh, slight uh, disinfection uh, uh, to the uh, require uh, the water obtained from slow sand filter to make it completely safe but um, in the process like uh, rapid sand filters which is used more frequently nowadays uh, we the uh, disinfection is must so 
let's have a look at the next process uh, which we uh, perform on the water that is disinfection so the filter water may normally contain some harmful disease producing bacteria in it and this bacteria must be killed in order to make it uh, the water safe for drinking the process of killing this bacteria is known as uh, disinfection or sterilization uh, so just have a look at let's have a look at the methods of uh, disinfection so first method is boiling uh, the bacteria present in water can be destroyed by boiling it for a long time however it is not practically possible to boil huge amounts of water moreover it cannot it uh, cannot take care of future possible contamination so this is the best method which is uh, this is the best method uh, boiling which is uh, which i generally recommend for uh, the domestic purpose domestic disinfection of the water but uh, when the water is uh, purified or disinfected at the higher range where it is, it is uh, how a huge amount of water is are to be disinfected it is not practically practically possible to uh, disinfect uh, the lot of amount of water with the use of uh, with boiling so this is uh, and boiling also uh, the the second problem with the boiling is that it can't take care of the future contaminations it means that um, it, it doesn't give the guarantee that uh, future in future the bacteria may reproduce or something else so it is not a good system when we are using at the large scales but it is best at domestic levels um, treatment with excess lime uh, lime is uh, used in water treatment plants for softening also uh, but if excess lime is added to the water, it can add, in addition kill the bacteria also. Uh, lime when added raises the pH value of the water, uh, making it extremely alkaline. Uh, this extreme alkalinity has been found uh, detrimental to the survival of bacteria. This method means the removal of excess lime from the water before it can be supplied to the general public. Treatment is like recarbonation for lime removal should be used for disinfection. So the, the most important method is line, addition of the lime, uh, addition of the excess lime because previously we added uh, lime uh, for softening the water and now we are adding some more lime to make, uh, make the water disinfect, uh, pure and to kill the bacteria. The function of the lime is that lime increases the pH of the water and make it extremely alkaline and in extreme alkaline conditions the bacteria is, uh, get killed by the lime and uh, but the, the thing is that the thing to remember is to remove the lime before uh, um, uh, distributing this uh, pure this water to um, the public we have to uh, we have to remove the excess of lime and the process like recarbonation is used to remove this kind of this excess line from the water um, after this uh, disinfection so the another method uh, which is used for treat uh, used for uh, disinfection is treatment with the ozone ozone readily breaks down into normal oxygen and releases nascent oxygen the single oxygen nascent oxygen which is a powerful oxidizing agent and removes organic matter as well as the bacteria from the water so ozonization of water is also an important method to disinfect the water chlorination uh, the generally germicidal action of the chlorine is explained by the recent theory of enzymatic hypothesis according to which the chlorine enters into cell walls of the bacteria and kill the enzymes which are essential for the metabolic process of the living organism so let's uh, and we have to just remember that chlorine also has some uh, disinfecting um, properties in it so that the chlorine can also be used and it is most used also and uh, there is a term uh, used is chlorine demand so, so the chlorine demand of the water is uh, may be defined as the free chlorine and chlorine means readily react with a variety of compounds including organic substances and organic substances like iron and manganese and here comes the chlorine demand 
the chlorine demand can be defined as the uh, as the total amount of uh, reactable cold chlorine which is uh, responsible for killing all bacteria in the water is known as chlorine demand and the excess chlorine which is get which remains unreacted is known as excess chlorine and uh, we can we just they they are they, these experiments we have done we did in the laboratory in the first uh, in the previous year also so this is a look at the treatment plan layout and siding after disinfection the thing remains with us is the the learning that how to site uh, how to lay out uh, the and um, how will uh, what should be the layout and siting of the treatment plant so let's uh, get into it the treatment plant layout and siting the plant layout is an is the arrangement of the designated treatment units of the on the selected site uh, siting is the selection of site for treatment plant based on features and as character topography and shoreline site development should take the advantage of existing topography obviously we have to take the advantage of uh, the uh, topography existing site topography and design the layout plan the uh, layout plant accordingly the following principles are important to consider a site on the side hill can facilitate gravity flows that will reduce pumping requirement obviously we have to reduce the pumping um, requirement and uh, that will uh, reduce the energy required energy required and will make the plant energy efficient so a side on a hill uh, a side on a side hill can facilitate the gravity flow and that will reduce the pumping requirements and locate normal sequence of units without excessive excavation or fill uh, the when landscaping is utilized uh, it should reflect the characters of the surrounding area site development should uh, uh, site development should alter existing naturally stabilized site contours and drainage as little as possible the developed site should be compatible with the existing land uses and com and the comprehensive development plan so these are the um, important uh, important principal factors which have to be uh, kept in mind while designing the uh, designing or and uh, choosing any site for uh, the treatment plant so here like um, um, when landscaping is utilized it should reflect the character of the surrounding area uh, site development should alter existing naturally stabilized site contours and drainage as little as possible so <coughs> we have to design the, the, the plant according to the uh, existing site uh, location also so um, a little of uh, cutting and filling uh, uh, should be done on the site and uh, should uh, a natural drainage of the site should be maintained uh, or if you are altering it it should be altered as little as possible uh, the third point is the developed site should be compatible with the existing land uses and comprehensive development plan so uh, the thing is that in the big cities where um, where compatibility and uh, this uh, uh, land uses is uh, fixed that this site is this uh, this place is should be used for the, the proper this thing only show so you have to um, uh, you have to look at that and you have to also look at the comprehensive development plan of the city that uh, where this thing has to be designed and planned so you have to keep in mind all these three factors for siting and development of the uh, any treatment water treatment plant so the result of the um, this siting and uh, this lecture and in next lecture we will study about uh, distribution system of this uh, this pure water the we have uh, we, we in the first lecture we took the pure water from the source there were different sources like natural water sources dams uh, many things and uh, we have traveled so long till here and we have stored the water after this thing the water will be stored in some over tanks or uh, some underground tanks uh, according to the site and uh, then the water will be distributed to the 
locality, uh, locality or the city or the public or to the public. So we have, we did a long process to clean the water and uh, made it uh, clean to have it. We have made it the water portable, uh, which is uh, pure, which is uh, which is pure, which is clean and uh, which is testless, odorless, and what all the properties we uh, read throughout this process. So in the next class we will uh, take a clue what is distribution system, how pipes are laid, how what are the different designs of the pipes which can be used to, which are utilized and which can be used in this uh, in many cities, uh, how it are, how all the systems are done. So this will be our next class and then we'll jump over to the wastewater treatment processes. Thank you very much. These are the references. Uh, this is uh, this PPT is recreated using open source softwares like uh, open source softwares and uh, NPTEL website. Uh, environmental engineering. Uh, you can you may always refer always refer these two books like uh, Environmental Engineering Volume One Eskinder and uh, Environmental Engineering Volume Two Eskinder. You may also uh, refer the manuals of uh, Central Public uh, Environmental Engineering Board. Uh, CPEHO so we, it is always available on the website and in the next class I will give uh, lecture class I will give the links to those PDF manuals which is uh, which are the guidelines or directives uh, given by the government of India so you may have always used those guidelines as a standard of this industry thank you very much